Dr. Shruti, there's a common saying that a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. And we often come across such myths and misconceptions while talking with patients in our field. So I'm just going to ask you a few myths that we get and you can tell me how you address them. Is it true that oh, genetic diseases can only present with a family history? Not always. In fact, 70 to 80 percent of genetic disorders may not really have a family history. There could be multiple reasons. Parents may be carriers but asymptomatic or maybe the disease may occur for the first time at the level of the child. What about the myth that genetic diseases can only present from birth or in early childhood? Again, not true because these genes are like a coding program. The error is there, but it may manifest later. It's said that these disorders can present at any time from the womb to the tomb. We know of certain diseases which can even present as late as the fifth or the sixth decade of life. So if we've done a full fancy genetic test and the results come back fully negative, does that mean that the patient doesn't have the disease? No, not really. It's like saying that uh, you've lost something in the ocean, you've checked it with three bucketfuls of water, but you've not got anything. So the current genetic test can only, at best, uh, as a summative, detect around 50 to 60 percent of all rare diseases. Of course, this yield is higher for certain disorders where it reaches around 90, 95 percent. But a negative genetic test doesn't always rule out the disease completely. Okay. And for genetic disorders where there are risks for future generations, like Huntington's disease and neurofibromatosis, for these conditions, if patients are affected, is it true that they'll have one child with the disease and then one child without the disease? Uh, it's like saying I have a coin, heads and tails. If I flip it twice, I should get heads once and I should get tails for the second time. It's a matter of probability. We need to understand it's a 50% risk of recurrence in every pregnancy. So if this affected patient bears children, it may be that both of them may be unaffected. Both could be affected or either in each or in any order could be affected and unaffected. So patients often come to us believing that they must have done something wrong during the pregnancy to cause a genetic disease in their child. For example, nazar lag gayi hogi ya maane kuch kha liya aur uh, maybe grahan like the exposure to a solar eclipse yeah, yeah. how do you address this so uh, these are very strong cultural beliefs often and it's difficult to explain to the patient that these are not contributory but the truth is that there is no scientific evidence that these are actually causing a genetic disorder. There are various other teratogenic exposures during pregnancy, certain med maternal medications, certain maternal infections, which can contribute to birth defects. But well, the factors that you just enumerated may not always be contributory. Sometimes patients also feel that they can't inherit breast cancer risk from their father, but only their mother. Yeah. Uh, but that's not true again, Neharika, because uh, a, a father who's carrying the genes, let's take a BRCA gene, who's carrying a, a harmful copy of the BRCA gene, is himself at risk of certain cancers uh, and can also pass the gene to uh, his children, be it males or females. So, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Shruti. That's a great way to know what myths we come across in clinic and how we can address them with evidence-based claims. Yeah, and I hope this time truth travels faster than the lie. Thank you so much. If you like this video, you can subscribe to the Purple Gene Clinic.